Hello everyone. Welcome to Battles in History. Today, I am going to talk about the Battle of Elysia or better known as Siege of Elysia, the last major battle of the Gallic Wars. The Battle of Elysia took place in September 52 BCE and was a decisive event in Julius Caesar's Gallic Wars. It pitted Roman commander Julius Caesar and his legions against a united Gallic army led by Vercingetorix, the chief of the Arverni. The battlefield was set at the hilltop fort of Elysia, situated in modern-day eastern France. Before I begin, I have a request to make. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out any of my future videos. This will help me a lot. Let's continue. As we have discussed in the previous episodes, the Gallic Wars began with Caesar's campaign in Gaul when the Helvetii, a Gallic tribe, sought to migrate in search of better lands. As the proconsul of the region, Caesar denied their request to cross into Roman territory and wage war against them. After defeating the Helvetii, Caesar remained in Gaul and received pleas for assistance from various Gallic tribes. Gauls were losing every major battle against the Romans. Tensions rose as the Gauls realized the need to unite against Rome. They elected Vercingetorix, the chief of the Arverni, as their leader. Vercingetorix diligently trained his forces and launched attacks against Roman settlements. His most notable feat was the capture of the Roman settlement at Cenabum, where he massacred the population and seized a large store of grain. In response to Vercingetorix's aggression, Caesar swiftly marched to Cenabum, recaptured the town, and prepared for a direct confrontation with the Gallic leader. Recognizing the scarcity of food, Vercingetorix decided to starve out the Romans by ordering the destruction of food and forage supplies. Though the Gauls suffered losses at towns like Cenabum, Vercingetorix summoned his supporters to discuss the situation and formulated a strategy to deprive the Romans of fodder and provisions. Throughout the following months leading up to the final battle at Elysia, the Romans faced constant challenges in procuring provisions. However, the legions remained resolute, displaying unwavering determination even in the face of hunger. Caesar demanded grain from Roman allied tribes and made his way to Gorgobina, where the Gauls were besieging the city. Along the way, he destroyed small Gallic strongholds like Noviodunum, seizing crucial food supplies. As Caesar approached, Vercingetorix suspended his raiding activities and chose to confront the Roman army elsewhere. With the siege of Gorgobina lifted, Caesar advanced towards Avericum, a central Gaulish city. Employing ancient assault techniques from Greek warfare, Caesar constructed a large siege ramp and positioned two towers near the enemy wall. The attack on Avericum was further supported by a Roman artillery stationed at the base of the ramp. Despite the scarcity of food, Caesar's legions easily captured the town. As the Romans scaled the walls and entered the city, the panicked Gauls, haunted by memories of the massacre at Cenabum, abandoned their weapons and fled in disarray to the farthest corner of the town. Following the capture of Avericum, Vercingetorix wisely refrained from engaging Caesar in open battle and chose to bide his time. However, as provisions dwindled and tensions among the Gauls grew, they decided to take a united stand against Rome. They elected Vercingetorix as their leader and made their final stronghold at Dragovia, their capital, where the Battle of Dragovia took place. Caesar, realizing the gravity of the situation, conducted raids on small Gallic towns while approaching Dragovia. Unfortunately for the Romans, some of their Gallic allies began to abandon Caesar, strengthening Vercingetorix's forces. Caesar lost the Battle of Dragovia and retreated with his army to the Caesar's Gaulish base where he reunited with Labienus and his corps, who was a lieutenant of Caesar. The United Roman legions marched towards Elysia. On the other side, Vercingetorix fortified his position on the hilltop town of Elysia, where he would face Caesar's legions. The Roman forces, 
estimated to be around 70,000 troops, confronted the combined Gallic army under the leadership of Vercingetorix, consisting of 80,000 infantry and 15,000 cavalry. The fortress town of Elysia was strategically located on the summit of Mount Oxois, near the source of the Seine River. It was surrounded by the rivers Oz and Osrain, making it a challenging target for capture. Caesar described Elysia in his Gallic Wars as a town perched on a high plateau with steep slopes, making it virtually impossible to capture without a complete siege. Upon his arrival at Elysia, Vercingetorix ordered the digging of a trench between the two rivers, obstructing the Romans' approach to the town and camp. Additionally, he sent his cavalry northward to harass and delay the Roman advance, resulting in a confrontation with Caesar's cavalry at Vingian. Though the Gauls suffered heavy losses, they succeeded in buying time for Vercingetorix to bring in the area's cattle into his camp. He also dispatched his cavalry to seek reinforcements from neighboring tribes. Despite having a substantial army positioned on the hilltop, Vercingetorix had only 30 days' worth of essential supplies. Upon reaching Elysia, Caesar and his legions embarked on the challenging task of building field fortifications. The Roman legions were highly skilled in combat engineering, boasting specialized craftsmen and ample labor force. Their first duty was to construct an 11-mile circumvallation line around the Gallic camp to prevent any escape and to cut off essential supplies. Digging ditches and erecting palisades for protection was standard procedure for the Roman legions during their campaigns. Realizing the potential threat of Gallic reinforcement arriving from the rear, Caesar ordered the construction of a second line of defense, known as the contravallation line, spanning 14 miles. This line phased outward, intended to repel any Gallic attacks from outside. Furthermore, a trench 20 feet wide was dug around the Gallic position to impede any advance on the Roman fortifications. In some sections, parts of the trench were flooded. The excavated earth from the trenches was utilized to build a rampart, which was then topped with a wooden palisade. Rows of obstacles were placed in front of the palisades, including five rows of sharpened stakes known as clippy or tombstones interwoven to prevent uprooting. V-shaped pits contained stakes called lilia, while diagonally embedded iron barbed stakes called stimuli served as additional deterrents. In addition to the trenches and ramparts, an earth and timber wall, 12 feet tall and featuring 33 towers, was constructed every 80 feet. The battle commenced as Vercingetorix hoped for relief forces to arrive. In the meantime, he conducted minor attacks on the Roman defenses to keep them occupied. When the anticipated Gallic relief force, consisting of 250,000 infantry and 8,000 cavalry, according to Caesar's estimates, arrived, Caesar found himself defending his rear from external threats. The Gauls attempted to fill in the ditches, and a fierce battle ensued between Caesar's cavalry and the enemy forces on the plain outside the camp. After a prolonged struggle, the Roman cavalry managed to push their pursuit almost to the enemy's entrenchments, marking the end of the first phase of the battle. During the night, the Gallic relief forces launched an attack on the Roman rear while Vercingetorix led a frontal assault, utilizing arrows, javelins, and sling stones to breach the fortifications. Caesar described the Gallic onslaught as a tremendous barrage of missiles that aimed to sweep the Roman guards from the ramparts. The Romans responded with javelins and scorpion siege engines. Roman reinforcements, led by Mark Antony, eventually stabilized the situation at the rear and pushed the Gauls back. On the following day, the Gauls launched a two-pronged assault. One attack targeted a Roman fort believed to be the weakest point of their position, while the other was a diversionary assault on various points along the Roman front line. Caesar called up reserves and sent five cohorts, under the command of Labienus, to reinforce the besieged fort. Sensing that this might be their final opportunity, Vercingetorix ordered an all-out assault on the Roman line. 
A barrage of missiles forced the Roman legionaries to fall back, and the Gallic forces began to dismantle the Roman defenses, inching closer to breaching the walls. In response to the dire situation, Caesar personally visited the trenches to inspire and rally his exhausted men. He appealed to their indomitable spirit, reminding them that the outcome of this battle hinged on their courage and determination. The Roman commander ordered a counterattack led by Decimus Brutus, and in a desperate move, Gaius Fabius was sent to provide additional support with all available troops. Caesar recounted that he himself led a third body of reserves to reinforce the troops. This decisive action turned the tide in favor of the Romans, and the Gauls were ultimately repulsed. While the battle raged on, the Roman cavalry launched an attack on the Gallic rear, further aiding the Roman offensive. Together, the Romans managed to regain the upper hand, and the Gallic forces weakened. Additional troops were dispatched by Caesar to support the legions defending the besieged fort. With the assistance of German cavalry, the Romans pushed back the Gauls, causing them to break ranks and flee from the battlefield. The victory at Elysia came at a tremendous cost. The aftermath of the battle was marked by the overwhelming carnage left behind, with the bodies of warriors strewn above the palisades and countless corpses piled around the outer fortifications stretching for miles from Elysia. The day following the battle, Vercingetorix, adorned in his finest armor, surrendered unconditionally to Caesar. He was promptly taken as a prisoner to Rome, where he would be paraded through the city during Caesar's triumph. Vercingetorix would spend the next six years languishing in prison before facing execution by strangulation. Although minor skirmishes occurred in the aftermath of Elysia, the Gauls were effectively defeated and Gallic independence came to an end. The Battle of Elysia was a pivotal moment in Caesar's conquest of Gaul, solidifying Roman dominance in the region for generations to come. The campaign itself resulted in immense devastation, with millions dead, a million more enslaved, and hundreds of cities taken by storm. While Caesar's motivations may have been driven by personal gain and ambition, his military prowess and triumph at Elysia were undeniable. It was recognized as his greatest and most astonishing victory, securing Rome's control over Gaul and further establishing his reputation as a formidable military leader. That's all for today. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment and share this to your friends. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching, have a great day ahead.